Hi Seahawks, it's Mrs. Glenn. This video is for 3.1 input, output, and evaluating functions. So let's get started. So we've got a few things to go over before we get started so that you understand the vocabulary. So when you're talking about functions, you've got x and y that we've dealt with before, but this is called the x, which is the input. So that's the number that you're plugging into the function. And your y is your output, so that's just the answer. So then the function notation looks like f of x. That's how you say this, f parentheses x, you call it f of x. And then x is always your independent variable, which means um, it doesn't have anything that influences it. For example, time, um, things like that where you can't stop time or go back in time. So nothing's affecting you know, every minute that goes on. So that's your independent variable. And also x's are all your domain which is all of your x values that can fit into whatever function you're talking about. And then y is all your output. Those are all your answers. So if you want to put parentheses answers here, and that's your dependent variable, and that's because it's dependent. This answer is dependent on what you plug into the function for x. So if you plug 2 in, you're going to get a different answer than if you plug 3 in for y. So that's why the y is your dependent. And your y is the range. So all of your values that are um, the answers will be your range for whatever function you're discussing. So each input has a single output. So when you're talking about functions, a function will have no repeating x values. So if you look at this little diagram down here, this line means this is an x value going to a y value, and this is another, the same number, going to a different y value. So this is like 1 and this is a 2, and then there's a 1, and then this is a 3. So you can't have a repeating x value. If the x values repeat, then it's not a function. But over here, you'll notice that the two x's are different, and it's going to um, the same y value, and that's okay. So you can have the same y value, but you cannot have the same x value. So down here, we say f of x equals x squared is how you would say this sentence up above. So you just call it f of x. So whatever this letter is, it does not have to be an f. I mean, an x, it could be whatever um, independent variable you're talking about. So if we're talking about uh, the number of cats, then we could put f of c, c for cats. And then this letter in front doesn't also always have to be an f either. It could be a g or an h or whatever letters you're talking about, depending on how many functions you're discussing. If you're discussing two functions, you could have one be f of x and the other one be g of x, just so that you're knowing which function you're referring to. So let's show you a few examples of what that looks like. All right, so for the first one, the Hamptons family has a fish tank holding 10,450 milliliters of water. The water is leaking at a rate of 270 milliliters per minute. Define the input and output in the given scenario. All right, so your input is going to be time. Typically, um, whenever you're dealing with a function, time is always going to be your independent variable, which is the x. So on part A, we're going to use m for minutes. So m is going to be the number of minutes. And then the other variable or would be your y. So we're going to do f of m because f of x would be the y, but because we're using m, we're going to do f of m, which is the amount of water. I'm going to go H2O. We'll do a little science for you. Left in the tank after m minutes. I just put quotations around it. And then for part B, write a function to model the situation. Well, we're starting with 10,450 milliliters of water. So we're going to do F of M equals 10,450 milliliters. And every minute they are decreasing by 270 milliliters. So minus 270 and it's per minute. So I know the variable is going to go on the 270. Then part C, how many liters of water will be left in the tank after 10 minutes? So we're going to replace that M with a 10 because that's our input. That's what we're plugging into the function. And wherever M was in our original function, we're going to put a 10 there. So you have 10,450 
minus 270 times 10. Well, anytime you're multiplying by 10, you can just add a zero to the end of your answer. And then we'll subtract that. And so you end up getting 7,750. But if you pay attention here, the units asked for liters, and this is in milliliters. So milliliters, there's more milliliters than liters. So we would just have to divide by 1,000 so that we can get it back to liters. And when you divide by 1,000, you end up getting 7.750. And do not round unless they tell you to. So if they didn't tell you to round, then don't round. This zero, however, is not needed to... Oh my goodness, my eraser's not working. Now it's working too well. Ay ay ay. Okay, so the zero is not needed in order to um, put your answer. It's, it's an insignificant digit. I'm so mean by saying that, aren't I? You're just such an insignificant digit. <laughs> All right, so it's liters. 7.75 liters. And then we know that we have it in the final answer. So if you put 7,750 milliliters, you would actually be wrong because they're asking how many liters. So pay attention to the units and you might want to underline it or circle it when you're reading the question so that you can make sure that you put it in the right, correct unit. All right, number two, the volume of a cylinder V of H is given by the area of the base times the height H, the radius of the base of the cylinder shown to the right is five inches. Cylinder volume equals pi R squared H. So pi r squared h is actually the formula to calculate the volume of any cylinder. So over here we've got the radius being halfway across. Well, I know all the way across is 10, so halfway across would be 5. And our height, we do not know that number, so we just use the letter h. So down here you're going to put v of h. For, h, or for a, they want you to write a function that represents the volume of the cylinder. Well, I know pi we use is 3.14. So instead of writing the pi symbol, I'm going to use 3.14. They told us in this scenario that radius is 5. So I'm going to use times 5 squared because the radius was squared in the formula. And h we don't know, so we just leave it as an h. So then we're going to calculate anything we can calculate. So this turns into a 25. The h comes down. 3.14 comes down. Now we can multiply these two because they're like terms. So when you multiply 3.14 times 25, you get 78.5. And H just tags along because you can't multiply it with a number. So 78.5 would be what V of H equals. And that's our function for this scenario. I don't like that that's too close to my V of H. Hold on. Let me fix my equal sign. And my 7, for that matter, I guess. Move it over a little bit, Mrs. Glenn. That's better. Okay, 78.5. So now for B, it says find V of 3 to, and tell what happens. So V of 3 just means we're plugging 3 in wherever H is. So we're going to rewrite it as 78.5, but instead of writing H, we're writing a 3. So when you calculate that, you end up getting 235.5 cubic inches, and it's cubic because there's three dimensions. There's the area of the base, and then there's the height and the width. So there's three different um, uh, dimensions. 3D figures have three dimensions. That's where the, the 3D part comes in. We are three-dimensional figures because we have length, width, and height to us. Um, anything that has length, width, and height would be three dimensions. So that means you raise it to the third power at the end. So now this part of the problem also says, and tell what it represents. So what it represents is the volume of a cylinder with a height of three inches equals 235.5 cubic inches. 
apologize for the messy handwriting, but it's hard to write on this little tablet that I use. All right, so that's what you do. Make sure you put cubic at the end if it's a three-dimensional figure. Next one, which of the following relations is not a function? So remember the rule back in the beginning, if it has a repeating x value, then it's not a function. So if all of the x values are different, then it would be a function. So for this one, it's 0, 2, 5, and 3. That's okay. None of those repeat. For this one, it's 4, negative 4, 0, 4, negative 4, 0. All of those are different, so that's okay. 6, 4, negative 3, 4. So we have 6, 4, negative 3, 4. Because these two repeat, then it's not a function. So it should be C, but let's just make sure D also does uh, work. So negative 3, 2, and 5. Negative 3, 2, and 5 are all different numbers. So the only one that is not a function because it repeats the number 4 would be the letter C. And last one, consider the following relation. Which ordered pair would be could be removed so that the relation is a function? So remember, our x values cannot repeat. So are there any repeating 1s? No. Are there any repeating 3s? Yes, these two repeat. Are there any repeating 6s? No. Are there any repeating 7s? No. So 3s are what we're going to need to get rid of. But which one would you get rid of in order for you to... Um, have a function. Well, remember, it doesn't matter if the y value repeats. So most of you are probably thinking, oh, you should remove the 3 comma 11. Well, actually, that doesn't matter because y can repeat as much as it wants to or it doesn't have to repeat at all, but 3 can't. So you either can pick 3 comma 8 or 3 comma 11. Either one, if you remove it, will make the rest of the set of numbers a function. And that is the last one. Go Seahawks! Woo!